2027 is a fan-made DAO sax game. Is it free? Yes. Is it good? Yes. Is it available in English? Da suka. The mod originally caught my attention because a significant chunk of the story takes place in my IRL neighborhood. So we'll take a look at the game, and then we'll dive into the local lore, and I'll be getting inappropriately personal and intimate, making all of us very uncomfortable. But first, basic orientation. The immortal classic, Deus Ex 1, takes place in the year 2052. The good for what it is prequel, Deus Ex Human Revolution, takes place in 2027. The game itself was made in 2011. The total conversion we're going to be playing today, Deus Ex 2027, is also a prequel, developed in parallel with Human Revolution. It's dramatically different in terms of aesthetic and plot, and it also takes place in 2027. And it was also out in 2011. I hope you're not confused. We are Daniel, an augmented agent, a metal man since nano augments aren't invented yet. The skill system received a major overhaul. Electronics now combines computer hacking and the use of multi-tools. You'll need more than one level in the skill to unlock really useful features like turning off cameras. Heavy weaponry governs the use of both rocket launchers and grenades, and the latter work just fine without the skill. Mechanics is about low-tech lockpicks, as well as operation of pet mechs, a new feature. The pistol skill governs handguns and submachine guns, as well as the crossbow. Rifle is everything else. Investing in pistols makes the early game easier. Rifles are abundant in mid and late game. Medicine makes the medkits heal us more, and it also governs melee damage now. A level in medicine really helps in the first two missions. The adventure begins with a heist. You should be able to immediately determine if 2027 is a game you want to play yourself or consume as a YouTube video. First, there is no voice acting. This is understandable, it's a free mod. But the work of voice actors was a huge part and a hugely underappreciated part of what made the original brilliant. Secondly, 2027 makes a number of very strange world-building decisions. This place is color-coded as the property of MJ-12, a group of villainous conspirators from Deus Ex 1. Daniel doesn't know who they are, but the player does. I've always assumed the MJ power armor was cutting-edge tech in the first game, but no, it's already in active use, 25 years before the JC Denton adventure. Not sure if I agree with this interpretation of the lore. Patrolling the sector makes you wish for a nuclear winter. New Vegas was only a year ago. The joke was still fresh, don't be too mean. The big guy is Magnus, Daniel's old friend from college. He joined a PMC and eventually got a job at this place, Human Horizon. Magnus has an arc that develops throughout the entire game, so these interactions matter. We can lie to our friend about Daniel's purpose here, or we can tell the truth that we are a covert operator, a cybernetically augmented data thief. If we tell the truth, Magnus assumes we are not being serious. Black Mesa, but red. Working in this place must be very tiring for the eyes. Our goal is to get to the terminal behind the glass. The person on the comlink is Xander, the hacker guy remotely guiding our actions. In the corporate meeting scene, they are discussing something called Project T, but without voice acting you can't even tell who is currently talking. Oh my god, the MG-12 are working on an Evangelion! The dialogue conforms to the style of the original quite well, at least in the first half of the game. More on that later. The last obstacle are these moving laser tripwires. Hard to spot a red beam in a red room. We got the password of a tablet elsewhere in the facility. Here they are, the corporate secrets we came here to steal. Connecting. Assuming control. The entity on the comlink was something named Titan. All of that was two years ago.
We are staying in a cozy apartment in a historical area of Paris. The place belongs to a colleague of ours named Christoph. He is late. The man on the couch is Xander the Hacker. We are on the run. Whatever happened when Daniel blacked out during the Human Horizon job, the MJ-12 operatives have been chasing us all over the globe until we ended up here. The reason the cyber thieves managed to avoid capture is because of the guidance provided by Titan, whatever it is, some sort of electronic presence in our brain. Titan is also our employer. There is another Human Horizon lab right here in Paris. Our job is to find its exact location location and gain access. A newspaper with a crossword. What city will host the Olympic Games in 2024? Uh, Paris? I don't believe this was decided when the mod was being made. Deus Ex predicted. This is a good sign for the game. Oh, this is an excellent level. The Paris mission in the original game always felt very dungeony to me. There were very few social elements. This version of Paris is a true quest hub, like Hell's Kitchen or Hong Kong. Human Horizon agent detected. The carrier should avoid contact at all costs. If the man in black catches Daniel, he initiates dialogue. Deus Ex has no speech-related skills, but we can lie to him by picking the correct dialogue option and it does actually work, although not without consequences. It is possible my evaluation was flawed, he says. I wonder if they... Oh yeah, they explode in this game as well. Anyway, as I was saying, Paris is cool. It has all the things we love in Deus Ex. Hidden paths, exploration rewards, eccentric locals, and a nightclub with fantastic music. Seriously, some of these tracks rival the original. The doorman notices our mechanical augmentations. Since we clearly didn't come here to dance, the entrance fee is a hundred bucks. Thankfully, the ATMs are still hackable. No, this is not the character from the first game. The security guard automatically confiscates our weapons. Don't forget to pick them up when leaving the club. We were under the impression our buddy Kristoff works here at the bar, but he was actually fired some time ago. Supposedly he can be found in a different establishment. The mapping style feels very authentic. Not too much detail, but not too little. These guys are the Judicians, one of the gangs here in Paris. A gang in air quotes. They seem more like a group of privileged students playing mafiosos. Our first side quest. One of the Judicians got captured by their rivals from the Shadow Legion. We are to rescue him. Very few people on the streets at this hour. Gaining access to the bad guy compound would cost us a multi-tool. I think we'll take the back entrance instead. It's a combat slash infiltration sequence. Daniel is a mech. He starts the game already augmented. He can run faster, jump higher and hit harder. The new inventory system. We can choose which items we take from a container. You no longer have to open this screen to jettison all the extra garbage you accidentally picked up. It's interesting just how different the arsenal is in this game compared to Human Revolution. In the Ubisoft Deus Ex, the guns were futuristic. In 2027, they're vintage pieces. Firearms from the 80s. That's not very practical and doesn't make any sense from the world-building point of view, but I interpret this as a purely aesthetic choice, possibly inspired by the Matrix. It works in no small part because of the high quality of the models. Without the skill investment, the firearms are as useless as ever. The individual we are supposed to rescue. The Judicians are amateurs and they have a problem maintaining basic OPSEC. You are vigilantes, mercenaries, same as me. What makes you think you were chosen by God? Oh no, God couldn't commission such deeds. Do you think Aliena Viti- Aliena Viti inoculi sabemus. Atergo nostra sunt, 
It's a Latin phrase that roughly means we keep an eye on other people's faults but fail to notice our own. My neural augmentations don't parse bullshit. Uh, Daniel, actually they do. This is funny because IRL, the translator's profession, was the first to be consumed by AIs. Come on, Deus Ex is supposed to predict these things. The Judicians seem to be an edgy philosophy club for students. Except the year is 2027, Maoism is out of fashion, and they're all performatively religious. The quest chain continues. There is a traitor in the organization, but the Judicians don't believe he deserves to die, so they hire Daniel to ambush the guy and knock him unconscious. The problem is that I don't have a single non-lethal weapon except for the pepper spray. Maybe we can pick something up in the gun store. The security cameras are much harder to trick or disable than in the original game. You need to be very deliberate with your movements. Stealing the weapons without triggering an alarm is beyond our ability, but we do get the safe. Hidden in the dark corner near the store is the dead body of our buddy Christoph, and this was his place of employment. A happy chemical is released in my brain when I see a well-designed Unreal 1 map. The barfly managed to snap a photo of a person who took away Kristoff. Oh, it's that guy. Here is a more uh, up-to-date picture. The lair of the Shadow Legion is in the basement of one of the buildings here in the neighborhood. These guys are not hostile. Their leader knows Daniel by reputation and wants to work with him. Later it will be revealed that he actually mistook us for someone else, an Italian man also named Daniel, also a mercenary. We can do jobs for both factions, up to a point, like in Vegas. Despite the silly name, the Shadow Legion is a real criminal organization, not a student club. Perhaps Perhaps the name doesn't sound quite as stupid in French. La Légion de l'Ombre. Anyway, the Legionnaires want us to steal the compromat the cops have on them. Attention Carrier. The mansion's owner is the leader of the Illuminati, Lucius de Beers. Majestic 12 is part of the Illuminati power structure. Avoid contact with de Beers and other members of the organization. I don't believe it's possible to explore the mansion, it's just a set piece. Weird that we are Illuminati pilled, but I suppose it would have been boring to have Daniel re reveal a plot element from the main game. Gunfire Acoustic Sensor. Shit, it works. In order to do this the clean way, we need a high-tech stealth armor consumable, sold by this guy in the club toilet. Normal Deus Ex. Toilet people are well equipped. The deal is 300 bucks up front and another 300 when the gizmo is delivered. We are to meet him behind the club. My counter offer. And do you know what? One of these guys has a shotgun. When loaded with sabo shells, it's capable of dealing damage to mechs. Very important in this game. The cops keep the compromat in a paper folder. Charmingly old-fashioned. And what is this? Nazi treasure was discovered in the Shadow Legion hideout. This has no connection to the local narrative, I don't think. The devs probably had a bunch of World War II assets for Unreal Engine 1, and they wanted to make them useful in the Deus Ex mod they were making. The final mission in the chain has Daniel and our new friend Arman take on the entire Judicians gang and kill them to the last man. A Cyberman gangster with an MP40 gunning down LARPing students in downtown Paris. An interesting scene, but it's time for us to wrap things up. What a rotten way to die. The goal of the Paris segment is to learn the location of the Human Horizon Lab. This can be done via working for either of the gangs or simply by exploration. We can use them, but we don't need them. Sweet. Our first augmentation upgrade canister. The entrance to the lab is right here, in the old town. The Legionnaires sent a specialist who knows the access code for the door. The lab is accessible at any time with a pair of multi-tools.
The Unreal Engine 1 aesthetic is deeply underappreciated by ungrateful gamer folk, and this sickens me. The lab is flooded. This is when the athletic skill becomes important. I highly recommend you memorize the underwater route. The carrier's goal is to gather information about the purpose of the facility. All the gameplay elements of Deus Ex, the social locations, the combat dungeons, the exploration bits, are competently replicated in the mod in a compressed form. The Sabo rounds are priceless. Greasels, lab-engineered transgenic creatures. I don't believe this technology is supposed to be invented yet. Deeper in the lab we find the second augmentation canister. The upgrade we got from the Shadow Legion is Digital Vision, looks like this. The new canister is a choice between two important upgrades. An afterburner enhances the effects of all installed augs at the expense of additional battery drain. Energy optimizer reduces the energy consumption of all active augmentations. I installed the optimizer, but both choices are valid because of another new addition, the perk system. Daniel accumulates perk points as he gains experience, and these are very powerful. One borderline broken perk is energy restoration, which does exactly what it says. Combine it with the optimizer and you won't be picking up a single battery ever again in this game. This is the info package we came here to find. Titan, the presence in our brain, is going to use Daniel's computing power to decipher the information on the disk. This permanently drains our batteries and makes the screen look like this. The newly acquired optimizer does nothing, by the way. We need to swim back to the entrance in the dark without even the ability to use the flashlight. Warning! The carrier's reckless behavior has alerted Human Horizon. Enemy forces have been deployed in the area. Thanks for the heads up, asshole. I had to kill a power armor troop with a knife, but I guess it's a cool bit of reactivity for Daniel's sociopathic behavior in the Paris level, so I don't mind. Decryption procedure complete. The electronic presence explains that it's merely a sub-program, a small part of a much larger entity, and we found clues on its location. We are to fly to Moscow and find the man called Vladimir Grigoriev, one of the individuals behind the Titan project. Gather your stuff, Xander. We're leaving. Russia also known as Psychotronic Slop Bucket. The first fully AI-generated human nation. The name Russia is an appropriation of Rus, an old Slavic state and possibly, maybe a Finnish word for the slave trading company that brought the Vikings to Kiev many centuries ago. Xander informs us that the use and manufacture of augmentations is outlawed here and that the country is in a state of civil war. The design document provides the timeline of events. In 2013, the republics in the Caucasus rebelled against Russian rule. Things quickly escalated and in 2014 it was a full-scale war. Oh wow, Deus Ex predicted Russorez. Impressive, although the location turned out to be wrong. The Caucasian Emirate innovated warfare by repurposing common commercial-grade guard bots for offense. Another excellent prediction. The Russians responded with a strategy of indiscriminate bombardment of cities with grad launchers. Well, that's like predicting that water will be wet. In 2016, the economy collapsed and with it, the state. The Russian Federation was no more. Twelve former colonies became independent. The cops will shoot on sight. Moscow is both a social area and a combat puzzle, like Paris was in the first game. Oh, hello there. It's a version of AK that shoots NATO rounds. Okay, whatever, an AK in Deus Ex. If it makes you happy, so be it. What the hell? I take back everything positive I've said about this game. I personally, that is IRL, jumped over this fence while running away from cops twice during the April 2007 street protests. Real vanity hours. This is the first ever mention of anything me related in the media. In spite of the violence, the crowd had a large percentage of young, middle class student bohemian types. What is happening is potentially too serious. It is potentially the early seed of something very profound, and that is why it's a genuine threat to Putin's regime. 
Listen, Mr. Ames, sir, I'm from the future. I have good news and bad news. The good news is that we absolutely nailed the look. I still dress like that. Suspension of disbelief shattered. Xander tells us to go to the nearby Chinese cafe. There is someone waiting for us there. Here is a homeless person complaining about immigrants. Almost all cops are armed with AKs, meaning we'll never run out of ammo in Moscow. The patrolling mechs are a huge problem. This is how the difficulty stays high. You might assume that with augmentations and perks this powerful, Daniel will be an unstoppable killing machine. Wrong. 2027 is in fact more difficult than the original. The game is balanced by cleverly controlling the items we get. There are about a dozen mechs in total in Moscow. We'll need at least one explosive per mech, and so far we collected a grand total of two explosives. The Militarists. The armed opposition to the government. I used to make fun of Call of Duty for putting us up against the ultra-nationalists. It's a description, not a proper name of a movement. And here is this game doing the same thing. <laughs> Instead of defending themselves, the militarists made an attempt to execute their Omar hostage. The Omar are a community of cyborgs introduced in Deus Ex Invisible War, a game that nobody played. It's debatable if Omar are even human. They replace their frontal lobes with a wireless interface that links all Omar into one massive consciousness. Orgs are banned in Russia, and so are the Omar. Our cyborg friend is grateful for the rescue. We are given a password to their secret base, accessible via the metro station. The silenced Mac 10 they give us is another antique. I take it out of politeness. Don't want to insult the robot people who possibly share memories. The Chinese place Xander instructed us to visit. More excellent Unreal 1 mise-en-scene construction. The man tells us they serve both Chinese and French food. This is realistic. It's very common for a low or mid-priced place to combine several national cuisines in a single menu. Sushi, pizza, burgers, Georgian. After Daniel speaks the code phrase, the man gives us the keys to his apartment, which is going to be our base of operations while we are in the city. Aren't I beautiful? What's that beeping sound? Daniel, it's Magnus. I heard you are in Moscow. Don't ask where I got this number. You got yourself in some serious trouble, man. Why did you do it? Why do this to me? You made me into this. We have to talk. I'll find you. There are many prized Buddhas you will observe. Pizza, liquid calories, soy food. We bulking. Oh yes, should have come here sooner. And that's the lair of the arms dealers. A message on our computer had a password. His name is Yevgeny. Congrats, we finally found Yevgeny. The man starts the dominant quest chain in the Moscow episode. First, we'll need to prove ourselves by assassinating a military officer. I killed him an hour ago, actually. The second task is about reducing the number of patrolling bots, making the city easier to navigate. Again, it's something we want to do anyway. The Shamil Basayev looking fellow in the armory sells rocket ammunition for a gap gun, but we don't possess the weapon itself yet. This is something we need to address. The Moscow level consists of two maps, and the travel between them is done via the really existing Kitai Gorod station. The Pushkinska Square is, or rather used to be, a popular place for protesters to gather. The one Mark Ames wrote about began here. Note where the helicopter landed. The game is cleverly directing us to where we need to go to get a rocket launcher. Until we do, the bots can be destroyed with sabal rounds, but you'll run out of these pretty quickly. Normal ammunition is next to useless in comparison. Watch this. Sad. 
On the roof of one of the buildings there is a military helipad. Again, all the expected gameplay bits are here, sneaking, shooting, evading mechs and cameras, but everything is compartmentalized into three or four medium-sized rooms. Somebody please turn up the volume. Here it is, the iconic rocket weapon, and the way to solve our robot problem, which is a requirement for Evgeny to advance the main quest. His last mission is an insane multi-stage firefight between half a dozen of Evgeny's associates and multiple squads of Russian troops. The battle is much harder if you choose to specialize in pistols instead of rifles, as they don't deal as much damage and the ammunition is less plentiful. We have one more place to check out before leaving the city. The name of the club is The Revolutionist, an instance when English actually makes it sound cool. The club is the Omar HQ in Moscow. Disabled people come here to illegally get replacement limbs. This is how they are indoctrinated into bromarism. Strangely enough, these guys still refer to each other by their human names, so the Omar common consciousness isn't a thing yet. A genuinely hard choice between a ballistic shield and a cloaking device. The Omar want us to recover something called Amrita, but they refuse to explain what it is or even what it looks like. Wikipedia says it's a Sanskrit word for immortality. We meet our friend Magnus at the train station. He is uh, changed. During the Human Horizon incident, when Daniel got overtaken by Titan or whatever it was, he killed all the staff, destroyed all the mechs and tore Magnus' legs off. But we can still make things right. Find Amrita and bring it to Magnus. Whatever it is, it supposedly has the power to heal him. The writing in this scene and in the Omar scenes is awful. This is the game at its weakest. Magnus is a huge robot man, but he talks like an anime character. I became freak, a cyborg. It was the only way to save my life, but I hate this life. 2027 predicted the human revolution writing and plot. Turns out Amrita is a health regeneration tech. Very convenient that the army had two of them and one comes in a form of an AUG we can install on Daniel. Human Horizon agent activity detected. The carrier is advised to stay alert. Hey buddy, I choose to give Amrita to Magnus. The music they play in the Omar club is annoying, I don't want to go to that place again. We'll be leaving Moscow soon. But before we do, I want to briefly talk about the square and these streets and their significance in real life. Here at Warlocracy Labs, we take pride in our ability to explain complex events via shitty video game analogies. I've struggled for days thinking about how to communicate what this place is to outsiders but then I think I finally got it. The cult role-playing game Planescape Torment takes place in Sigil, the City of Doors, a self-proclaimed center of the multiverse. People and creatures from all over gather here in a mess of factions, ideologies and stories. And this is exactly what it is, the Sigil of Eurasia. If you have any business in the psychotronic slob bucket, you'll end up here eventually. Let's take a look around, shall we? This inaccessible building is the first McDonald's in the USSR. You might have seen the photos. In the game, the building on the opposite side is an Asian restaurant, which is also inaccessible. In real life, it's an Armenian restaurant. And in the same building, there was an apartment of one Yegor Prosvirnin, a Russian internet icon of right-wing variety. The building with a helicopter pad really does have some sort of a structure on the roof. This is Tverskaya Street, and it leads pretty much directly to the gates of the Kremlin. In the basement of this building here is the Philanster Bookstore, a place you go to acquire rare books. In the past they used to be at least nominally left-wing. A long time ago there was even an incident when someone threw an incendiary device into the store. But then again, I recall reading an ancient life journal post where one of the employees was going on a rant on how the anglo saxon imperialists brainwashed the populations of the world to make them think cigarette smoke 
smoking is bad. So it's an idiot contrarian brand of leftism. This building is where one of Moscow's anti-cafes used to be, which is a type of establishment where you pay for time instead of meals. They don't really serve much of anything there except for coffee. This place is notable for being a favorite of American Nazi refugees, some of whom ended up here after the events of Charlottesville in 2017. The individual who used to bankroll the American far right dropped here a bunch of times as well. William H. Ragnary II. I love saying this name out loud. It even sounds like someone you'd meet in the upper ward. As you can see, the politics of this place are inconsistent, to say the least. Here is the 2022 anti-war rally. We sure saved the world back then. The 2007 protest I mentioned was organized by an unlikely alliance of liberals and national Bolsheviks. The march ended when one of the Nazbols threw some sort of a stinky grenade into a crowd of allies. One of my friends said, this revolution smells like shit, and we were gone. That's the building where Lebedev resides, one of the scientists responsible for the Titan project, and the reason we are in Moscow. A cutscene. Important plot details are about to be revealed. Titan is an AI developed by the state to control its nuclear forces, a machine consciousness for the perimeter system. It was programmed to sacrifice human lives if it's impossible to save them. Once the military realized how dangerous this was, Vladimir and the others were ordered to shut down the project. Titan defended itself, wiping out most of the research personnel. And then the government went after the survivors. That's why Vladimir was so hard to find, he had to fake his own death. We've learned the location of the Titan AI, a military facility in Siberia. Our next stop. Wow. Deus Ex predicted the decolonization discourse. My sensors are picking up a strong source of electromagnetic radiation close to your position. It might be hard to tell on your end, but the bad guys have cloaking devices. The vision enhancement isn't very helpful. Maybe if it's upgraded. Magnus is gone. Cyborgs are cool. The robot legs are the highlight of this game. He needs therapy, not a regeneration og. Xander can't land a chopper in the city for some reason, so we have to travel to the outskirts. The train station, the last map in the Moscow segment, is an open-air mini-dungeon. There is no story here. You kill a bunch of bad guys and stock up on hardware. We are gonna need it for the expedition to Siberia. The facility hosting the deactivated main body of the Titan AI was abandoned years ago. Unfortunately for Daniel, the military base right next to it is fully staffed and operational. The music in the previous level was hit and miss, but in Siberia we are returning to the excellence of the Paris tracks. Sure, you can sneak around these guys, the non-lethal playstyle is fully supported, but I prefer to emphasize the assassin part of being a stealth assassin. Another mechanical innovation of the mod is bullet time. The fastest bullet time I've ever seen in a game. It's still very helpful. Yes, of course there is a friendly technician and PC deep in the facility, and of course he's willing to sell us shit. This is Deus Ex. Eventually we get into the main complex. The home of the machine. Not too much detail, not too little. The geometry is similar to the classic Half-Life 1 level with the three-handed snake monster. There are a number of set pieces that seem to be Black Mesa inspired. But unlike Black Mesa, this place is located under a lake, it looks like. Vladimir used to work here. The facility costs billions of dollars, he says, and most of it appears to be undamaged after the attempt to shut down the AI. Eventually we reach the control terminal. Login, Titan. Password? Domination. Um, do you think the game is trying to say something with its themes? 
Don't even try to leave the facility without talking to me first, says Titan. He changed his comlink picture to a statue. Uh-oh. Now, how funny would it be if it was an Akkadian statue? Unfortunately, it's just Plato. When the AI was trying to save itself when Vladimir and the others attempted to shut it down, it uploaded bits of its code to the internet. They were acquired and studied by Majestic 12, who created their own Titan-based AI called Thanatos. This new system is very dangerous because much of the American military might is reliant on drones, and these are easily hijacked by an AI. If the drone plot element seems strange, keep in mind that the mod was made in 2011 during the reign of the famously drone-positive Obama administration, so it was in the air. Titan is a patriot. That's how it was programmed. That's why it cares. We need to stop Thanatos. Well, Titan needs to stop Thanatos. I'm not sure why Daniel would be on board. Here is an idea for a story. A real Russian patriot AI. Like a Russist AI. Daniel, my drug. The world is controlled by the invisible structures of power maintained by a tribe of people called... The anglo -Saxi. I have calculated the probabilities, Daniel. Kiev will fall in three days. Vladimir was watching us via the comlink. He agrees that the American Titan is a genuine threat. We are going to the United States, and as a specialist on AIs, he is coming with us. Thanatos is hosted at the Mount Weather Emergency Operations Center, formerly a FEMA-controlled site, now operated by MJ-12. We are to stock up on supplies and leave immediately. Daylight missions are very rare in this franchise. We partied all night, and now we wake up to the consequences. The martial law is over, it seems. There are civilians on the streets. These two are conversing about a series of mysterious deaths that occurred here four days ago. Looks like the trains ain't running. We won't be visiting the revolutionist. I wonder if anything changed at the smuggler's hideout. Yevgeny is present, but he says he doesn't have anything for us. This might be because their quartermaster, the Basayev lookalike, was killed in a firefight during the first Moscow segment. I wish I'd spend more money on rockets when he was still alive. The Chinese restaurant. Their smiles and optimism, gone. There are a handful of new side quests. We can get a few hundred bucks for destroying the rogue spider bots, but there is nothing to spend it on. Handsome as ever, the owner replaced pizza with hard liquor. I wonder if it's good for them. The color, I mean. Do fish even see color? Probably not. Our little personal armory is restocked. We are gonna need these grenades. So the Omar. We didn't help them enough, or we helped their enemies too much. The Omar are dead. But the militarists, the anti-government radicals, are back. They seem to know who we are and are grateful that we helped them somehow. You can repay me by giving me your gun. The AR is the final upgrade for characters skilled in rifles. The model looks great, as does the reload animation. Anyway, we're done here. Time to leave Moscow behind. The chopper will take Daniel to the United States. The final level of the game. Vladimir will be our companion for the first half of this mission. I was under the impression that the man was a frail Soviet professor type of a character, but it turns out he is actually deadly in battle. The follower AI leaves something to be desired, however. Deep red skies. Is that what America is like? This is the longest range firefight in any game in the Deus Ex series. The sniper we're trying to kill is deadly accurate. I had to reload a bunch of times before I got him. 
Now, Deus Ex lore cells know that MJ-12 was much stronger in Europe than it was in the US, and the idea that they can take over a FEMA facility this early in the timeline is ridiculous. And the FEMA facility also happens to be an ICBM launch site. Vladimir's plan is to initiate a missile launch and then close the silo doors so that the nuke explodes underground and destroys much of the facility, and with it, the Thanatos AI. Our old buddy Magnus. Time to close his arc. This is so choices and consequences. He remembers what we told him back at Human Horizon. He is grateful that we gave him a healing og. It didn't work, but it was a nice gesture. Do you have a cigarette? He asks. If Daniel has a pack of cigarettes in his inventory, then the fight can be avoided. If not, or if you wronged Magnus by being mean to him, it's a boss battle. Don't worry about me, Daniel. I'll be fine. The location design is consistently strewn throughout the mod, but the story begins to fall apart in the latter half of the Moscow segment, and then it only gets worse and worse. Someone called Majestic taunts Daniel via comlink. Yes, like Bob Page does in the original. But the writing here is just... Ugh. Inglorious bastards deserve inglorious death. Die, you bastards and murderers, die. Like, who are you even talking to? Maybe he is talking to these invisible guys who stand no chance against Daniel. Sick bastards, you've killed them all! You aren't bothered by creating a few more orphans, are you? You monsters! We leave Vladimir in the missile command and venture underground to initiate the launch. Titan shares its plans. There is no need to destroy Mount Weather. The Rushist AI can hack the Thanatos system, take it over, and then use its resources to, uh, well, for the benefit of the world. Login Titan. Password Domination. So, do we side with Vladimir or with the AI? The third ending, the Omar ending, is unavailable because they are all dead. Yes, there are problems with the story, but the gameplay is tight. The facility is the final exam. Using Sabo rounds to destroy bots. We know how to do this. Taking advantage of hidden paths. Sneaking around large groups of enemies. Hacking robots to make them fight for us. Who do you think is gonna win? Whatever. The MJ-12 operatives with stealth armor are a clever enemy. They're dangerous, hard to see, but ultimately not unfair once you figure out they're nearby. And it makes sense that they are not in the original Deus Ex. These systems look expensive, and the methods of their detection might have proliferated by then. Scanning area. Activating these, whatever these are, connects Titan to the Thanatos system. I bet the mechanism to enable missile launch is behind that door. It took me a while to figure out how to get past it. We do it via the ventilation system, of course. Now we need to get back to the command center above ground. It is very nice of him to wait for us to finish conversing. What about our escape plan? asks Daniel. The escape plan is that we just run really fast. So, Deus Ex 2027. Gameplay authenticity? Easy 9 out of 10. Innovation? Yes. The cleverly reimagined skills, the perk system, tons of little things like how you can order weapons via phone. Story and writing. The game starts strong, stumbles in the Moscow chapter, and then shits its pants in Siberia. The translation becomes much worse in the latter half. But it's not just the execution. Some of the ideas are simply not very good, like Mr. Majestic. Now, how accurate were the predictions? This is what's truly important. Let's see, the mod predicted. The Paris Olympics, very good. The Russian War, yes. Weaponization of commercial drones. The decolonization discourse. And it failed to predict AI translation software. 
Overall, a fine adventure. Let's do the patron credits and then talk about the endings. Special thanks to Jim Lawrence, Dima Urban, Changolian, Azazel and Baneful the Doggo, 1967 Ford Mustang, a two-room apartment in Bobruisk, Belarus, Don, Ganso Bomber Motherfucker, C6, Yuri Solodovnichenko, Snafu, Jason Phillips, Buck Swoop, Source is the best engine ever made, Combat Lobster, Danny Kilpatrick, Ray Nurse, Ilya Rubin, Coco Smith, and Nathan Kabiska. Since there is no voice acting, there is no final monologue, but we are explained what happened to the places we visited and to the individuals we met. The Mount Weather Facility was destroyed and the Thanatos AI was destroyed with it. The Siberian base, hosting Titan, was retaken by the military and the main body of our former employer was terminated, with many of its sub-programs escaping to the internet. I like to think that they would go on image boards and red pill the innocent nerds on the anglo saxi Magnus died from the org rejection sickness. His daughter Anna decided to follow in her father's footsteps and uh, also became a robot person, I guess. Oh, come on, this is like a parody of Deus Ex. Anyway, not much of anything happened to Vladimir. Daniel and Xander kept doing mercenary jobs. Paris became better after we killed everyone. Moscow became worse. You might have noticed that the apartment Lebedev resides in is much bigger than a stereotypical Soviet flat. In in order to get a place like this, you need to be either a party apparatchik or a member of Soviet intelligentsia, a recognized artist or a scientist or an engineer. When I was little, my grandmother, in an apartment not unlike this one, taught me how to play Wolfenstein 3D and the Lost Vikings. Instead of photos of military hardware, they had these models, about two dozen of them. Here is a dirty Russian secret. When the Moscow-led state expanded into Eastern Europe, it took over many territories that had a more developed academic tradition than the Russians. So the educated Slavs and the others were incentivized to move to the imperial core, Moscow, St. Petersburg, and assimilate into Russianhood. Back in 2007, during the Nazbol protests, we still considered ourselves to be Russians, as we were raised to believe. But things were moving in the wrong direction, and by 2014, you were supposed to be a little ashamed of your ancestors. By 2019, we were an alien presence. I noticed that sometimes foreign viewers, Americans especially, would see Russia as sort of an ambassador of Slavdom. But as I've learned via experience, Russia to Rus is what the nation of Islam is to Islam. Mark Ames, the American journalist whose article we've read, left for the US in 2008 after the Russian government closed his newspaper The Exile, effectively evicting him from the slop bucket. William H. Regnery II, who bankrolled some of the leading organizations and figures behind the American far right, died in 2021. Cancer. As far as I can tell, the cultural exchange between American and Russian writers didn't really amount to much. The closest thing the locals have to a political theory is the anglo saxi theory that exists in numerous variations and postulates that essentially the world is ruled in secret by the English queen. A Russian philosopher came up with this after analyzing the facts of history. You know the Russians are a real nation because a real nation must have a philosopher. Dramatic proclaimed the Russian right-wing organizer Yegor Prosvirnin. In the final days of the year 2021, Prosvirnin fell to his death from the apartment window. Few are talking about this, but he must have changed his views. Just minutes before the event, he sent me this picture with the words, I am commencing a bombardment of Moscow. Slava Ukraine. In the final days of the year 2021, Prosvirnin fell to his death from the apartment window. What a rotten way to die. In the final days of the year 2021, Prosvirnin fell to his death from the apartment window, weeks before the escalation in Ukraine. An ambulance with a license plate 1480B took away the body. Some say he was on a cocktail of drugs and probably thought gravity no longer had any power over him. Alas, gravity is real, but I'm not sure if the Russians are.
Eduard Limonov, the Ukrainian-born leader of Nazbols, also died just a year prior. An evil spirit roams the land. You know, if I was a Russian politician, I would simply not rent above the first floor. And I would also never drink or eat anything ever. But that's other people's problem. Those in our community who still, in the year 2023, trust the Russian decision-making engine with their futures and livelihoods are perhaps not the cleverest sons and daughters of Slavdom. Whatever social contract was mistakenly signed with the Russians by the previous generations, it is now gone. Many decades of work wasted. The last book I bought in the Phalanster bookstore was a collection of romantic correspondence between Franz Kafka and his, uh, E.G.F. That book is the most sexless thing to ever exist. But what wasn't sexless was the life of this guy's spouse, who hooked up with a French cavalry officer. In Russia, we honor traditions. One tradition is taking care of the family. The family being a euphemism for Putin's political clan. But there are other traditions as well. Am I right, Boris? At least the pussy was good. All my friends I grew up with left years ago. I will be leaving soon. But I won't be leaving you. 2027, what a video game. It's themes so nuanced, it tells us so much. The next project is Fallout 2 and the discourse. Choices and consequences, player agency oriented design, that sort of nerd stuff. And we'll also play through the entire game. See you in a few weeks.